Hello everybody and welcome back to the YouTube channel, the Mobile Biochem Research Group. This is Gustavo here and today I would like to talk about a work that we have recently published in which uh, we have extended an uh, energy decomposition analysis scheme to the case of uh, multi-scale hybrid quantum mechanical molecular mechanical systems. Now, uh, we have applied this procedure on one of our favorite systems, namely the cisplatin molecule embedded in a diolyl phosphatidyl choline lipid membrane. So I said in the previous slide that a cisplatin DOPC is one of our favorite systems. Uh, the reason is, as you can see here, uh, because uh, we have already published a work uh, in which uh, we studied the cisplatin uh, permeation inside the DOPC lipid membrane. So in case you're interested in further information in that regard, I would strongly suggest you to take a look at the video prepared by Lorena Ruano in which she thoroughly explains uh, us all the methodologies used there. I'll link uh, the link in the description below. Now, um, I'm not gonna um, spoil all the results that Lorena explains us here. I'm just gonna grasp the main uh, results that are gonna be fundamental in the upcoming discussion here. And in that work, uh, we compared the free energy profile of the permeation mechanism of cisplatin. We did so by means of uh, umbrella sampling simulations using a classical force field. Now, as shown here, we have also identified uh, two important regions of this uh, pre energy profile, specifically the minimum and the maximum of the profile. Now, the minimum corresponds to configurations for which the cisplatin is nearby the polar heads of the DOPC molecules. The maximum, on the other hand, corresponds to uh, configurations for which the cisplatin is at the center of the membrane. Now, we not, not only computed the Gibbs free energy profile, we also uh, determine the so-called interaction energy between the lipid membrane and the cisplatin molecule. Now, uh, I'm gonna get into further details on what the interaction energy is because this is the main subject of uh, the present video. So let us now dive into the definition of the interaction energy. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is uh, to subdivide our entire system into two different monomers. So here we're going to call monomer A the DOPC lipid membrane molecules and monomer B the cisplatin molecule. Now the interaction energy between these two monomers is defined as follows. So it is going to be the difference between the energy of the entire complex, the entire system, minus the energies of each one of the monomers computed separately. Now if we plug in the expression of a classical force field into each one of these terms, we obtain the following expression. Now here we can already see that the interaction energy is gonna uh, consist of exclusively pairwise non-bonded intermolecular terms. Now we see they're intermolecular because of the extrema in each one of the sums here. Now if we wanted to perform a partitioning of the interaction energy, we could do so in a straightforward manner. Indeed, here we can already identify and the first sum a so-called electrostatic term and the second sum, a so-called non-electrostatic term, which in this case consists of Leonard Jones potentials. So going back to our previous work, then we performed this energy decomposition analysis at the minimum region and at the maximum region. Remember that the minimum corresponds to geometries in which cisplatin is nearby the polar heads of the lipid membrane, whereas the maximum, the cisplatin, is at the center of the membrane. Now, uh, in that case, we saw that uh, for the minimum, the electrostatic term was the predominant one for the uh, uh, energy decomposition. Whereas uh, in the case of the maximum, the roles uh, of the two terms inverted. Now we're gonna take into account these results because we're gonna compare them uh, with uh, results obtained from a quantum mechanical energy decomposition analysis. So what happens in the quantum mechanical case? Well, the uh, definition of the interaction energy is going to be the same as it is uh, with general. However, since we consider a finite set of basis functions, this implies that the basis set of the complex is going to be larger than the basis sets of each one of the monomers as they are smaller. This in turn uh, brings a so-called basis set superposition error 
which stems intrinsically when we compute interaction energies. So in order to correct for this error, what we do is we use the exact same basis set in on three calculations for consistency. Now, uh, this goes as follows. We first uh, choose a, a set of uh, basis functions of preference and we compute the energy of the complex. And then when we go and compute the energies of each one of the monomers, we consider also the basis set of the other monomer in each one of the computations as shown here. So this is good for the interaction energy, but what about the energy decomposition? Well, here it is not going to be as straightforward as in the case of a force field. However, it is not going to be impossible as we will see in the following slides. So at this point, let's, let's talk about the objectives of this work. Well, uh, the main goal is to address the quantum mechanical energy decomposition analysis problem for our cisplatin and DOPC system. So how are we going to address this problem? Well, um, we are going to apply already consolidated uh, density-based energy decomposition approaches, and we're going to extend them to the quantum mechanical and molecular mechanical framework. So let us uh, at first talk about uh, these uh, consolidated energy decomposition approaches. So the energy partitioning scheme that we're going to adopt uh, uh, for the quantum mechanical case has been developed by Professor Marcos Mandado at the University of Vigo. So it goes as follows. Uh, the first thing we do is we consider an expression of the total molecular energy. Now this is uh, a functional of the one electron density and the two electron exchange correlation densities. So notice that this is simply the expression of the energy that we use to compute each one of these terms here. So uh, we are going to manipulate this expression to obtain a proper energy decomposition scheme. So in particular, we're going to manipulate uh, the expression of the energy of the, the total complex. Now, what we're going to do are two things. The first one is we're going to subdivide the nuclear terms as contributions of the two monomers. So uh, this uh, can be done in a straightforward manner because of the shape of each one of these operators here. Now notice that this is uh, the operator that appears in the electron nucleus uh, attraction and this is the term that appears in the nucleus nucleus repulsion. Now the second thing that we're going to do is we are going to represent both the one electron density and the exchange correlation density as sums of unperturbed terms of each one of the monomers plus uh, two uh, perturbation terms that arise following the interaction of the two monomers. So let us now take a look at these two perturbation terms in both uh, density expressions. So the first term in both cases accounts for the anti-symmetrization of the two unperturbed wave functions of the two monomers. These two terms are going to account for uh, the exchange repulsion interactions between the two monomers in the interaction energy. On the other hand, the, the, these two terms here arise instead following the relaxation of the total wave function of the complex. These two terms are going to account for uh, the polarization interactions between the two monomers. Now, putting all these things together, in particular, uh, including the energy expression for each one of these energy terms and considering the modifications and the energy of the complex, well, we obtain the following partitioning of the interaction energy. So here we have an electrostatic term, an exchange term that uh, depends on the exchange uh, density of the, of the complex, a repulsive term derived from the poly, uh, uh, poly deformation density, and a polarization term. However, uh, we can do even better in regard with this uh, decomposition. Specifically, uh, this is something that also has been done by Marcos Mandaro, and uh, it was to consider uh, the first order correction to the, uh, to the uh, polarization deformation density. Now, if we put this correction inside this expression here, what we obtain is this new energy decomposition, in which again, we have uh, the electrostatic term as before, we have uh, encompassed the exchange and the repulsion terms into a single poly repulsion term 
and the polarization has been let's say decomposed in its inductive and dispersive components so this is the expression that we're gonna use in what follows so going back to the objectives uh, of this current work well we have already seen uh, the energy decomposition uh, that we are going to be applying in our work now uh, at this point let us see how can we extend this uh, density based ADA approach to the quantum mechanical molecular mechanical framework now so uh, let us now consider an approach for the energy decomposition analysis in a QMMM case so we can start from the computation of the interaction energy so as we have seen before, we have to compute these three energy terms separately. Now, in the case of the energy of the complex, uh, well, the complex no longer consists of just monomer A plus monomer B, but we also have the molecular mechanics point charges. Now, in reality, the computation of this term here is rather straightforward because all we have to do is to perform an electrostatic embedding QMMM computation on top of uh, the full complex here. Now problems could arise in the definition of each one of the monomers. Now, because we have to account for the molecular mechanics point charges. Now the really important thing here is to consistently assign these point charges to either of uh, the two uh, monomers present in the system. So in our case, we have assigned all point charges to monomer A. So this means that now monomer A is going to consist of, uh, well, the lipid membrane plus the surrounding point charges, whereas monomer B is going to consist of the sole cisplatin molecule. Notice that here we'll st we're still performing the uh, BSSE uh, correction. So what about the uh, decomposition of the interaction energy itself? Well, we are going to use the same expression as the one derived before except that this time we have to account for the presence of the molecular mechanics charges we're gonna do so by considering them as uh, nuclear terms in the energy expression this means that since they are part of monomer a they are gonna appear in uh, all terms where uh, mo the monomer a nuclei appear now notice that this is not particularly relevant uh, in the case of this term as for the computation of the interaction energy, this term simply cancels out. However, it is going to be relevant for uh, this uh, operator since it does not cancel out uh, in the calculation for the interaction energy, but instead it appears explicitly into each one of the terms of the energy decomposition. So this marks the difference between non-QMMM and QMMM cases. And this is what we're going to explore in what follows. So, uh, having uh, this in mind, let's go back to the system under study. So, what are we going to do at this point? Uh, well, the first thing is we're going to once again focus on uh, the minimum and the maximum regions of the free energy profile. So, what we're going to do is that for each case, we're going to consider a classical molecular dynamic simulation. So, in practice, we're going to take the the MD simulation corresponding to the window of the minimum, that corresponding to the window of the maximum. And we're going to fetch an ensemble of geometries in each one of these cases. Afterwards, we're going to perform a QMMM energy decomposition analysis for each one of these uh, geometries. And at this point, the goal is going to be to compare the distributions of the energy decompositions obtained in the, in the geometries of the minimum and the geometries of the maximum and of course we will compare these results with the uh, with those obtained with the classical force field now here however unlike in the case of a classical force field we're going to have to address two problems to get a good compromise between computational cost and the accuracy of the method. The first one is we will have to, uh, to uh, define a proper size for the quantum mechanical region as we cannot consider the entire system quantum mechanically. And the second one is we will have to see what is going to be a proper number of sample geometries to get a, a statistical ensemble of uh, geometries.
So in order to determine a suitable size for the quantum mechanical region, we fetched a random geometry from the minimum region and a random geometry from the maximum region and performed an energy decomposition analysis, gradually increasing the size of the QM region. So here we increase the number of residues where each residue stands for each uh, lipid molecule. Now, notice that these computations are performed in vacuum. So the thing that we, uh, we notice here is that not even the interaction energy it attains convergence even after having considered seven residues in the quantum mechanical zone. So uh, we repeated these calculations, that is this convergence analysis, this time also including the point charges of the surrounding, let's say, environment. And at this point, we evidence that we have uh, the convergence for all the energy terms after having considered five molecules in the quantum mechanical region. This says two things. The first one is that it is actually essential, essential sorry, to consider the point charges that surround the system and second, that it is a good compromise to consider six residues in a quantum mechanical zone, and we also need to account for the point charges in the energy decomposition analysis. So, in regard with the uh, case of the number of geometries, what we did was uh, uh, to analyze uh, the average of each one of these quantities by increasing the, the number of geometries considered. What we saw was that after having considered 50 geometries, we had attained an almost entire convergence for all these energy terms. However, in order for us to have a statistical ensemble, we in the end decided to consider 200 geometries in the case of the minimum and 200 geometries in the case of the maximum region. So at this point, we can say that we have arrived at the crucial part of the results of this work. Now, uh, let us start by analyzing the uh, distributions of all these energy terms in a case of the geometries uh, fetched from um, the minimum region. Now, uh, to the right, we can see uh, the averages and the corresponding standard deviations for each one of the energy terms. Now, the first thing that we can evidence is that in the case of the attract, attractive contributions, sorry, which are these three here, the electrostatic energy is a predominant one. And this is actually something we had already observed in the classical force field case. However, there is a rather surprising thing here, and is that the non-electrostatic part is positive here. So this is different from the classical result. Now, if we go from the minimum to the maximum to evidence uh, eventual differences, is the first thing is that also in this case the electrostatic term is the predominant term in a case of the attractive interactions but this is uh, not the only thing the second thing that we can see here is that uh, the sum of the non-electrostatic terms although being negative in this case is still less than uh, the electrostatic part so we can summarize uh, these observations and these comparisons with the classical force fields in these two tables. So we can see here, as uh, seen before, that uh, in the QMMM case, the electrostatic term is predominant in both the minimum and the maximum, differing from the classical force field results. Thus, we can already draw some conclusions here. Well, uh, this is what I have just said. And the second thing is that uh, the fact that the non-electrostatic terms are rather uh, large you know, when considering the sign means that uh, in the case of the classical force field, the polar repulsion is underestimated. Now, although it is not possible to perform a fragment-wise uh, uh, decomposition of the interaction energy in a sense that here we cannot say, for example, that uh, the distance between platinum and this oxygen contributes uh, to some extent to uh, each one of these terms. We can make an, a somehow qualitative attempt in doing so. Now, we can, of course, uh, consider the uh, pairwise distances between fragments of the two monomers. And what we can do is uh, we can somehow compute uh, linear correlation coefficients uh, of each one of the energy terms 
with respect to um, a certain power of, uh, let's say, the interfragment distance. So specifically, what we did uh, was to uh, consider the correlation of each one of these terms with uh, each one of these powers of the inverse of the distance. Now, this is a qualitative analysis because, uh, well, uh, as you probably know, uh, these uh, terms uh, arise from the classical expressions of each one uh, of these energy contributions. Now, if we do so, uh, for example, by considering the uh, distance between the platinum and the choline residue here along the whole set of geometries considered, well, uh, we have a scattered plot like this one here. Now, the important thing is the computation of the correlation coefficient, and we can see that the, it is uh, 0 0.63, which, even though uh, does not indicate a perfect linear correlation between uh, yeah, the, the electrostatic term and uh, this uh, power of the distance, we can still see that there is some correlation. This in the case of the minimum. Now, in the case of the maximum, on the other hand, we see that the correlation is rather, rather small. Now, we have uh, considered the fragment decomposition for uh, each one of the DOPC molecules, uh, as uh, the one shown here. And likewise, in the case of the cisplatin, we have considered four different fragments. So we have computed the, the, the correlation coefficients that I have mentioned earlier uh, of each one of the energy terms with respect to the uh, interfragment, let's say, uh, distances. Now, in the case of the minimum, we can see that we have a rather high correlation coefficients uh, for the electrostatic part for the poly part and also the induction induction part, especially in a case uh, of uh, the interaction between choline and the platinum atom. Now, we did the same thing, thing in the case of the maximum. And uh, remember that the maximum corresponds to the cisplatin uh, inside uh, the lipid membrane. Now here we do not see evident correlations um, between the yeah, each one of the energy terms and each one of the interatomic sorry interfragment distances. So here we cannot uh, let's say evidence straightforward uh, uh, correlations or dependencies of uh, the energies in terms of the distance, like in a case of the minimum. So uh, we can now wrap up. And uh, so as we have seen, we have uh, extended and um, already existing energy decomposition analysis scheme uh, to uh, multi-scale quantum mechanical, molecular mechanical uh, computations. Now, um, in the case of the cisplatin DOPC system, that we have treated here, well, we have seen that the electrostatic interactions are predominant on both uh, the minimum and the maximum of uh, the uh, free energy profile. And here we find differences with respect to the classical uh, force field results. Uh, another difference is that uh, the classical force field underestimates the Pauli repulsion, which is better accounted for uh, in a quantum mechanical case. And uh, finally, we have seen that for each one of the energy components, we have rather strong correlations with uh, the, the distances at the minimum that is nearby the polar heads, but they are rather weak at the maximum region. And with this, I would like to thank all the members of the Mo Biochem group, in particular, my supervisor, Juan Juan Nogueira. I also like to thank uh, Alvaro Perez and uh, Professor Marcos Mandaro from the University of Vigo for participating in this project. Also the Centro de Computación Científica of the Autonomous University of Madrid and the Comunidad de Madrid uh, for funding. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, remember to put a like. And uh, if uh, you want to keep uh, being updated uh, with uh, future videos that we're putting in the Mobile Biochem channel, don't forget to subscribe. And thank you very much.